of Q&A Social Security Disability Today. I am your host, Attorney Anthony Reeves, and today we're going to do a special video for you regarding the Clark v. Astru Settlement Relief Order. So please, sit back and enjoy. Good day, and welcome to another edition of Q&A Social Security Disability Today. I am your host, Attorney Anthony Reeves, and today we're going to have a special edition focusing on Clark v. Astru, the relief order. For those of you who may be aware, a recent class action out of the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit was started based on the practice of the Social Security Administration using warrants for violation of condition of probation or parole as sufficient evidence that someone had in fact violated a condition of their probation or parole. Basically what was happening is that the Social Security Administration took the attitude, well, in this particular area, which was the New York area, that if you had a warrant for for allegedly, no, not that you actually did, but you allegedly violated your probation or parole, that they used that as evidence to basically cut your benefits off or keep you from actually applying. This had happened in such a, in such a great number that an actual class action lawsuit was presented. And basically, the, the United States Court of Appeals made the determination that this practice was not in the same meaning of the plain meaning of Social Security Act. So it's another way of saying, hey, Social Security Administration, this practice of doing this, that's not what the Social Security regulation permits you to do. So as a result, the class action was started in order to undo this practice. The actual relief order was issued on April 13, 2012, and it actually affects all class members from October 24, 2006 to the present. For those of you who are curious to know who the counsel that was responsible for this, it was the law firm of Proscara Rose, LLP, the National Senior Citizens Law Center, and the Urban Justice Center. This is important because this way you'll know who the main point of contact were with regards to bringing this suit forward if you have any additional questions that you need to have answered. Let's go ahead and focus on the bigger picture here for those of you who want to know ultimately what the order means. At the end of the day, the order basically stands for the premise is that the Social Security Administration is to stop suspending benefits or denying or suspending SSI payments or making determinations of an overpayment of case based solely on an outstanding probation or parole violation warrant. So basically they're telling the Social Security Administration if the only reason why you're doing these things to affect the ben these benefits, not other reasons, but only those reasons, you need to stop that right now. For those of you who are curious as to what do they mean by remedial provisions, basically these are what we call the corrective actions. The court is ordering the Social Security Administration to do certain things to fix the problem. First of all, they're saying, if you suspended benefits based on this solely, meaning if you suspended someone's benefits solely based on this practice that we said you shouldn't be doing, you need to reinstate those benefits. If you made an overpayment determination based on this practice that we said you shouldn't have relied solely on, return the funds. And if, they, if someone was denied SSI payments based on this practice, again, reopen the claim. I can't stress this enough. If Social Security did these things based solely on the practice of a warrant on alleged parole violation or probation violation, these actions is what they're instructing Social Security to do to correct the issue. Let me stress this. If there's something else floating on out there, meaning there's an actual arrest warrant for you, you're, you're, you're actually have an arrest warrant because you, you have actually violated probation. This, this particular class action does not shield you from those things. They're saying if the only reason, the sole reason are these particular actions, these particular reasons, which was basically uh, a warrant for alleged probation or, or parole violation, if that's the only reason, these are the things that you need to do to fix it. 
right, let's get down to the meat of the matter. Most people want to know, when is this thing going to jump off? Okay. Social Security has 60 days to provide a court, a plan of imp implementation with time frames. In other words, the order was on April 13th of 2012. They've got 60 days from that date to provide the court with a plan for how they're going to go back, go back and fix this problem that they created. So that's the first thing. Also, Social Security has also instructed within the next 30 days to post the order on its website. And the reason why is because there are going to be people out there who may not know what's going down. They want you to be able to have a place to go to get a copy of this order and know exactly what it is they are being told to do. And then finally, any they're going to have to revise a lot. They, meaning Social Security, is going to have to revise a lot of their protocols, their manuals, their operating manuals, procedures manuals, and they're required to provide this revised information to the class council that I told you about at the very beginning, which is why I said it's really important that as they're making these changes, you might want to reach out to this firm, to these firms and the national, woo, and the, the NSCLC and the Urban Justice Center in order to get information about actually how this thing is going to shake out. Okay, let's have some final thoughts here. First and foremost, I would encourage you to go to www.nsclc.org for more information. Copies of the actual order is on their website as well as links to the Social Security Administration with regards to instructions that they've already provided to the Social Security Administration with regards to stopping everything. They're a good resource if you're not really sure how this thing is going to shake. So they've been they've taken the lead with a couple of other services, meaning a law firm of Proscara Rose as well as the Urban Justice Center to kind of help out with, in terms of this whole class action. Long story short, they are the go-to to help you get an understanding of what's going to happen next. Next, be patient. I can't stress that enough because it's going to take a while. We're talking about class members across the entire country. So it may take Social Security a minute to put this thing into play. Now, the, the courts are not going to let them drag this thing out for a long period of time. They know that people have been negatively affected by this practice, so they're going to be getting on the good foot on this fairly quickly, which is why they told them you got 60 days to let us know how this thing is going to shake. And keep in mind, the court still has to approve the plan. So don't be surprised if Social Security provides the plan and then have to tweak it because the, the court says, you know what, we've got some problems with some of these things that you said here. Also, once the plan has finally been approved, again, be patient. We're still talking about the federal government here. It may take a while. They'll filter it out because the government's usually good about filtering information out fairly quickly. It still may take about a minute to kind of get the legs underneath this because there are going to be some people who will have to be educated about how to apply this appropriately, especially for purposes of recalculating benefits, reopening application, basically refunding money to people that they've taken money from. Also, like I said before, this order is not a safe haven to keep you protected if you've done something else that they can rely on to suspend your benefits. It's only if this is the sole reason that they've done it. So keep that in mind so you don't think, I got this order, and so if you've done something else, you think you run around here looking good. No, this is only if that's solely the reason why they cut your benefits off. Or if they've done other things to impact your benefits as well. Also, if you have questions, ask. This is a new territory. Anytime you have a class action lawsuit where there's an order requiring the organizations or a group to do something, it takes a while. So don't be afraid to ask. And more importantly, within the next 30 days, Social Security should have a lot of this information on their website. If you can't find it there, go to www.nsclc.org, and I guarantee you it should help you out immensely. Again, this is the Q&A Social Security Disability Today with your host, Attorney Anthony Reeves. I hope that the information provided to you uh, regarding the Clark v. Astru relief order was helpful. If you have any questions, you know where you can reach me here, as always. So if you have a question here, I'm here to help you. And again, my name is Attorney Reeves, and this is your Q&A Social Security Disability Today.